Hi everyone, I'm Kaling from Rhythm. So we, we have this interview here today. Um, what the purpose is to actually inspire um, aspiring triathletes. And you know, we have someone today here who really started triathlon, who, who don't even know how to swim. And, and Elaine Yang here is actually a Kona qualifier. She's an age grouper triathlete. And all these achievements she had while actually working full time in a job. Yeah, so hello Elaine here today. Uh, thank you for your time. Hi Kaling, thanks for the intro and hi everybody. Um, as, as you mentioned, I, my name's Elaine. Um, I'm a Canadian who's based here in Singapore. Um, by day, I'm a tax manager at a mining company and I've been participating in triathlons ever since I came to Singapore, uh, which is almost like eight years now. So I think to all the like aspiring triathletes out there, like I, I'm, I'm happy to tell you that I also started as a newbie <laughs> when I came to Singapore. Um, you know, I, I never even thought of myself as an athlete, um, but you know, my boyfriend now husband, now coach Arthur was getting into the sport at the time and it just seemed kind of exciting, quite new. And I just decided to like give it a chance. Um, but it's really been like, uh, a real change in my life in terms of my lifestyle, my mindset, the way I approach my life, my fitness, and my health. Um, so over the years, I've like really progressed from like doing a sprint distance triathlon uh, to Olympic to, you know, doing over a dozen of half and now like almost, almost 10 full Ironmans. Um, and I think for me, I personally enjoy like the longer distances. So like the full and the half Ironmans are probably like my niche um, or my preferred distance. Um, but but I love I just love the sport of triathlon as a whole. Wow! Oh, thanks for the introduction. I mean I mean Eli, I'm curious. I mean there are so many um, sports out there. Why triathlon? I mean it's not exactly the easiest thing to get started with. <laughs> yeah, that's completely true, and I think that's probably why a lot of uh, people like have a lot of hesitancy or like hesitate to uh, really go into that sport, right? Um, but for me personally, I love it because it's demanding and it's challenging. Um, it requires you to train and race over three very different sports. So like mm -hmm. swimming, biking, running. Um, and it really, truly tests you physically and mentally um, in, in a way that very few sports can. And there's always like another distance that kind of like keeps you, keep you, keeps you challenged, right? So, you know, once you kind of like master a short distance such as a sprint you know there's always that like uh, olympic distance or that half distance that you can then start working towards and so for me it's been a, a journey of just constantly exploring new things um, exploring new distances um, and i think overall it's made me a lot more of a resilient and disciplined and determined person and like i've really enjoyed that change it's kind of given me in terms of how i approach and live my life nice nice so I, I hear you as in um, triathlon, it's a sport that always giving you like a next milestone to work on. And I've heard of people who are, I mean, I'm personally uh, quite a newbie in the whole triathlon sport, but people have shared that it's a personal journey. It's always a, a sport of personal growth. And, and that's what you said yeah, beautifully here today. Yeah. Yeah, so, so in terms of, you know, um, being a triathlete, what kind of equipment have you started with? Because we know that there's so much out there in the market and so many different brands and all. Yeah, what would you recommend? Yeah, it can be quite overwhelming as a, as a triathlete. And like, for me, I started off as a runner. So like all I, all I ever used was like, you know, like a, walk, uh, a pair of runners and then eventually like a sports watch, um, such as like a Garmin watch. Um, but like when you go into triathlon, it's like, whoa, you know, you have to swim, you have to bike, you have to, you know, have all these equipment. And it's really easy when you look at like other people doing it, they seem to have a lot of stuff, right? Um, so I think there is a general misconception that in order to do a triathlon, you need to like break the bank or like, you know, get a lot of fancy gear. And then when you want to get gear, it's overwhelming because there's so many brands out there offering all sorts of different things and telling you that that's what you need to be faster. Um, but to be honest, I started off with very little. Um, and over time, as I got more serious with the sport, I realized what it is that I needed. Um, so if I had to really break it down to like bare necessities, um, probably for the swim, you know, all you really need is like a swimsuit and a pair mm -hmm. of goggles. And, and that's enough for your swimming and uh, for your training as well as your racing, right? So Roka, of course, has a nice range of goggles that you can choose from as well as swimwear. 
um, and you know it's perfect for different light settings, etc. For the bike, I would say that's probably the biggest investment that you have to make um, because it is a bike. But even for me, I, I really just started with like a like a aluminum bike, which was under like two k. Um, I couldn't quite understand at the time why you would need to spend ten k on a bike. Um, and so, like for your first triathlon, or just if you're just trying to test it out, you can even borrow a bike or just use a mountain bike or rent a bike. That, that's completely fine. Um, but most importantly, I think it's important that you know safety. Uh, you do have a good helmet. Um, you know, good, good gear. That's actually going to keep you safe while you're on the road. Mm. Uh, I ride with Canyon bikes and they, they do offer a great range of beginner to high performance bikes as well. So there is something for everybody. And a lot of brands will offer, offer that as well. Mm. And then of course, lastly for the run, I mean, honestly, all you need is a pair of shoes. Uh, like there's so many brands out there and all of them offer like a, a good range of, you know, support to performance ratios you really don't need that many, um, you know, just one is enough for training and really to just take it to your first, first track one. And of course, you know, when you realize that this is something you're really serious on, then yes, definitely invest in the good gear because it really goes a long way uh, for you to become like a faster, more experienced, uh, more confident athlete. Um, there's always things such as like try, try kits and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, honestly, for, for your first triathlon, you can just wear whatever you have. Yeah, yeah. Um, because you, you, you kind of debunk the misconception that um, triathlon is an equipment-heavy sport and most people think that they have to bring a lot to a, 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 the first race. But, you know, really, really just the bare necessities of what you need. And then from then on, if you're really serious and you just invest in, you know, better gear. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right, nice. Um, let's just bring back to, you know, I first introduced you as uh, somebody who is working full-time throughout these eight years just in Singapore, but yet with all this spectacular achievement you have. Yeah, how, how do you cope with all this? Because not just triathlon is an equipment-heavy sport, it is also a time-heavy, I mean, heavily investing, uh, invested time required, right, in this sport as well. How do you cope with both of yeah, I think you're absolutely right on that point, Kylie. Like, uh, and that's why I say triathlon is really a lifestyle because it becomes so ingrained in everything that you do. Uh, you really have to find that balance um, between, you know, you say full-time job, but it's more than that, right? It's mm. your full-time job. It's your personal commitments. It's, you know, other things that you have to do over and beyond training for an Ironman, right? And so um, for me in particular, uh, when I started triathlon, it's, it was hard because I'm a bit of a type A personality. So, you know, I'm always trying to be 100% at work and 100% in training and 100% in my personal life. And I think if you don't um, step back and try to really find that balance, that can really be a recipe for disaster. Mm. So over, over time, uh, and after making lots of mistakes and not really getting that balance quite right, I think for me, the key thing is really being smart and organized about your time. Mm. And particularly when you're moving to those longer distances where, as you say, it really requires that like, high time commitment, long hours on a bike, run and swim. Um, you know, for a full Ironman, you're looking at a distance of 3.8 kilometers for a swim, 180 kilometers for a bike. Uh, full marathon so if you think about how long it takes someone to just train for a marathon you add on then the bike uh, training and the swim training can be quite like a number of hours in a week um so I think for me personally it's really been about knowing myself uh coming up with something that is uh really organized and really looking at what that free time I have is and using it very wisely so that, that comes to like being very clear when you're working out, what's the purpose of the workout, right? Is it a high intensity workout? Is it a recovery run? You know, um, making sure that you stay on track and you know, really maximizing that one hour, not sleeping in, um, really getting up at 4 a.m. you say you are. Um, so like, I feel like all of those things have really made me quite disciplined and you have to, if you wanna get it all done. Mm. Um, I also have a coach that works with me. Um, and elevate performance coaching and you know he really works with me to come up with a personal plan that takes into account all my timing constraints and my training objectives um, the fact that I live with him really helps us all because <laughs> he kind of knows uh, what I need um, but you know it really takes a lot of the guesswork out of the equation and then you can also be very confident that you know 
every workout you're doing is very purposeful and moving you into the right direction towards your goal, whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I mean, um, sharing that, I mean, the triathlon sport is a personal growth, so it also comes down to really crystallizing, I would say, time that you spend in your personal life or the things that are most important to you. And that's how you kind of bucket all uh, this, you know, slots together. But can I push it a bit? I just want to check with you, you know, can you share your typical schedule, you know, in terms of what time do you have to wake up and then how much time do you train and then all the way to work and then how you end that day? Yeah. So I'll, I'll probably share like what I used to do because I think, um, I don't know if you know, but I'm pregnant now. <laughs> so my training schedule has changed a little bit. And obviously with no races in the horizon, um, you know, that, that training schedule has, has looked a lot different over the last couple of months. Um, but like when I'm, I'm training for a race, um, you know, uh, it, it really is about balancing time, as I, as I mentioned, and having a very uh, good routine, right? So for me, it's, it's, you know, for Monday, I'll have like two bikes or two, two three bikes um, a week, right? And I usually always have like a long ride on the weekend because I know that's when I have time for that, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'll usually like schedule the long rides for the weekend, but then throughout the week, depending on my time and my schedule for work, I'll either wake up really early and go out with friends to go cycle at 4 a.m., for example, and do a 60K, 90K. Or if time is limited, then I jump on the indoor trainer and really bang out like a really good workout, right, when it comes to the bike. Swim, um, I, I like to swim with squats and I like to swim with people. So at least once a week, um, usually on a Monday, I'll join like the Elevate Performance Swimming Squad. Um, and then I'll, I'll, I'll get one really good high quality swim from that. And usually it's quite high intensity, um, really focusing on like really building up that strength and that power in the swim. And then throughout the week, I'll like wake up in the morning or after work to try to fit in like another two, three swims throughout the week. And then like uh, for running, it's, it's really about what race you're going to do, right? So when I'm training for like a longer distance Ironman, like an Ironman, um, you're really looking at quite um, a run heavy training. So I'll usually kind of do a long run on the weekend as well. But throughout the week, I'll do a mix of high intensity runs versus a, a longer or shorter run, depending on what the purpose of the training is. But I usually try to do at least one uh, track session a week. Um, and track sessions are great because it really requires you to run at a very high threshold um, and really trains like your power and your speed in a way that perhaps a long, slow run that you'll do on the weekend uh, wouldn't provide you. Yeah, so I would say usually maybe 10, at least 10 hours of training a week um, on top of maybe like a 40 to 45 hour work week. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a lot if you think about it when you have to take into account sleeping and eating yeah. and our personal life as well. Yeah, just less sleep and <laughs> wow, 4 a.m., man, it's really not easy. That's why I say it's a routine. Like if you don't actually put it in your calendar and you just say, yeah, like, you know, why don't I wake up tomorrow at 4 a.m.? Mm. It's probably never going to happen, right? So it's really like having having that group of people that you always cycle with on a Thursday at 4 a.m., right? Making sure the night before you have everything set up so that there's no excuses when you get up at 4 a.m. or when your alarm rings at 4 a.m. All those are little things that kind of keep you on track. Um, and make sure that, you know, you get those workouts in. Ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, and, and Elaine also shared that uh, very good news that she's pregnant, uh, ending her second try, going to third try. Yeah, how has the training changed now that, um, you know, there's a bit of a low season as well as you being uh, pregnant right now? Yeah, I think um, it's definitely very different from like, you know, a year ago when I was like, training for like uh, a full Ironman. Uh, but, you know, I would just say it's very much like my off season right now. And I think for me, it's it just all happened in the right time. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a forced off season for a lot of people because of what's what's going on in the world. Um, and so for me, I would say I'm still quite active um, during this pregnancy. Um, and I think, again, it comes down to the fact that, you know, being active has just become such a lifestyle over the last eight years. 
And so just stopping because I'm pregnant just doesn't seem to make any sense to me. So it hasn't not even crossed my mind. <laughs> I'll be the... swimming, biking, running until someone stops me, I think. <laughs> does your but, pediatrician you know, stop you? Does my your pediatric doctor? Uh, no, no. I mean, her advice is obviously if you aren't someone who's active and you get pregnant, then don't start training for a, like, a, like a 10K. But if you're someone who's always been active, then like, you know, just bring it down a notch, know your own body, um, watch the intensity. Um, and, and actually training and being active throughout your pregnancy is actually a very good thing. Keeps you healthy, keeps you happy. And then ultimately makes sure that the baby is also healthy and happy too. Yeah. And, and she'll be the next Iron Man like you, like Iron Man lady like you. <laughs> I won't put that kind of pressure on anybody. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. Yeah, if she's, I mean, all of her parents are such. Yeah. Uh, Making me the corner in my Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, so we also want to ask you, you know, is it, do you think it's um, talent or hard work that that made you have such results that you have right now? Uh, For me, I would say definitely hard work. I mean, I, I don't know how to gauge my talent, but I think. In general, my, my, my view is that talent only gets you so far if you don't put in the hard work. Mm. Um, so I always say that for me, that's definitely been really important for my success in the sport. Okay. Yeah. And, and you have really put in a lot of hard work from, you know, you, 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 not, not knowing how to swim and then all these uh, achievements that you have so far. Yeah. And then what was the mindset change? You know, um, Back then, when you were a beginner, you were, I would say, stumbling into the sport, trying out, and then really being serious and setting real serious goals to achieve what you have right now. That mindset change. Yeah, I mean, I definitely didn't go into triathlon like expecting too much. It was really just out of interest. Um, I was like, why not? Um, and so uh, I think, you know, yes, obviously, I wasn't really amazing. <laughs> first started uh, I couldn't really swim there was a lot of anxiety about getting on a bike uh, getting in the swim um, and then you know it, it actually takes a lot uh, more and you have to go, actually do a triathlon to experience it is putting mm-hmm. all three things together and like you know trying to make it to the finish line but I think for me the mindset that has really been quite important throughout this whole journey is you know not being discouraged by results you know if I had given up that first race where I you know, like barely made it out of the water, barely made it across the line. Um, and I had just stopped there. Like I would have never realized, you know, what potential I have. Mm. Um, and not comparing yourself to others as well. Like, I think it's really easy to look around you and go, like, I'm not good enough. I'm not fast enough. I'll never get there. Um, but what I think is really important is just really celebrating the victories that you have. Um, being proud of yourself that you've given your best and actually making sure you do give your best in everything that you do Mm. and so for me it's I really enjoyed that process and I would say that the improvement really happens over a long period of time triathlon is not one where you know you you do a few races and then suddenly you're a superstar at least not that's not my experience Mm. Um, and so I would say like you know it's just that keeping that really positive keep hard work uh, attitude has been like super important over the last couple of years. Wow. Oh. And then how is it like when you 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 know you, you learn about the news that you actually qualified for Kona? I mean, that's every triathlete's dream. Yeah, <laughs> it definitely was. And for me, it meant a lot because uh, I, I put a lot of work into actually um, qualifying for Kona. Um, I think for those of you who might not know what, what it means to qualify for Kona, you do actually have to win an Ironman race. Uh, somewhere around the world um, and only by doing so do you get to qualify a race um, in the Ironman World Championships in Kona mm. and so for me it was actually like a two-year journey that I embarked on I was a few years into the sport um, you know I had seen that kind of improvement that we mentioned but you know I knew uh, when I kind of made this goal that it was still a stretch goal right and that there was still a lot more that I needed to do in terms of improving, in terms of getting faster, um, working on certain weaknesses, if, you know, qualifying for Kona was even a realistic goal. And so for me, it really was like sitting down one day and going, okay, this is my goal. This is what I want to achieve before I turn 30. 
right? Saying, okay, what, what are my weaknesses? How am I going to address those weaknesses? What is the time frame I need to do to get there? Um, and really working with my coach, working with myself, um, really putting aside that time um, to really do that work. Um, and honestly, like it was like a crazy year of me just that being my primary focus, what I ate, what I did, I was living, breathing this goal. Um, and I honestly wouldn't have been able to do it without the patience of my friends and my family. Um, but to have crossed that line, uh, I think it was Ironman Korea, um, and knowing that like all the hard work was worth it, uh, it just it just really meant a lot. Yeah. So so for, so for the three years, um, you set a goal and it was just an, I would say you eat, live, and breathe it, and it was all, it was an all consumed purpose you have. Yeah. 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 Wow. It was. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. You know, um, Roka has this very interesting hashtag that it, 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 it used every, every, every time. It's called Find Faster. Yeah, do you find it um, something that is relatable to you throughout your journey this far? Yeah, it definitely is something that really resonates with me. I think for me, Find Faster is, is really speaking to the spirit of actually pursuing performance, right? Pursuing that better you, pursuing that stronger you. And for me, that, that journey has never stopped and it hasn't stopped. You know, I might be on my off season right now, but like, I, I still believe that like, I still have a great performance and I can still be better than I was yesterday. Mm. Um, and so for me, it's, I've been so lucky to have great gear to work with, great sponsors like Roka, um, a coach that really helps me um, and really believes in me. Um, and that gives me the confidence to know that there's still, there's still more in me um, to show and to give. Mm. And it's a continuous process of being a better ass, you know, being a better self. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, last question, because I'm, I know we're taking a bit of a time. You know, what advice would you give for someone who is just starting out on the triathlon spot? Uh, I think if I had to give myself advice <laughs> years ago, um, it's really just to enjoy the process. Um. For me, I truly believe triathlon isn't something you just do one race and you just walk away. It's really a journey and there is so much to learn and experience. Um, and you shouldn't rush into that and you shouldn't rush it. Um, so I, my recommendation is, you know, find a community, find friends to do it with you. Um, as I mentioned, there's so much like resources out there in terms of squads, training sessions, clubs, um, coaching groups. Um, so, you know, Find that community that really keeps you going, that motivates you, that makes you excited about this sport. Um, mm -hmm. And of course, if you don't know where or what to do or how to start, just just message me and I'll like point you in the right direction. <laughs> what's, what's your Instagram handle? Uh, it's Elaine Forever Young. <laughs> so remember that you can just message Elaine directly. Anytime. Yeah, thank you, Elaine, so much for your time today. Um, you know, the team at Rhythm um, are very grateful that you're here to share your insights throughout your journey. And we also would like to really congratulate you on you being a new mom. And, you know, we hope that this will not be the last. Maybe, um, you know, you can share with us next time, you know, how, how is it like your journey being um, um a preggy mom and then going to Kona and then of course after that being a mom who juggles with being a super mom Kona try to lead you know try uh and and all that you know I hope this will not be the last yeah thank you for your oh, time today. definitely won't be thanks for having me and thanks for believing in me and uh yeah you'll definitely be seeing more of me <laughs> <laughs>